Today's guest introducer is Clygon 5 from the Klaxon 6 Sector, 4th Quadrant, with a very important message about holiday travel. <clears throat> Thunder only happens when it rains! Thank you, Clygon, for that salient information and... What we want to do here is create a blend shape. So if we're just focusing on this word shape here, I've created this original text here, and then I've created a distorted version where we have kind of this overshoot or, uh, you know, this overlapping type of movement. And then we have this shape here that represents this kind of stretched out or blurred movement. So just two different shapes and animating them with the blend shape works like a charm. So let's see exactly how does that work. So I will clear this thing out and I want to create some text, but I want to create very specific text. I just like to center this and uh, I want to create text that is built from straight lines and let's increase this font size here. And if I, if I click on this, this direct selection tool or this edit shape tool, uh, and click on my text here, you could see that we have an even distribution of points. Whereas if I choose a different font, this might not work as well. Like this one here, if we look at it, it has one edit point here and that's it for this entire letter. And then this one has like a bunch uh, of points bunched up together over here. So, uh, and that's, I don't know if that's the way that the, the font was created or what, but for now, this effect works best for these types of fonts because they have a nice even distribution. And uh, let's get some more distribution here by I'm gonna alt click on this layer. Actually, it was the only thing there, so I didn't really have to do that. But if I go to deformers, I can go to add divisions here. And now I just have way too many points. And I could double click on my add divisions with alt held down to Take a look at that and I could bring this down to like two uh, and then let's select this again so we can see that. So at, at two, we have two control points between each one of the originals and um, and that might work. But for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to go with it at a, a simpler of just one extra point in between. And uh, now that I've got that, what I could do is make this shape editable and uh, that, that sounds delicious and uh, let's go to uh, make sure we have make sure we have the type layer selected and we can go to edit make editable and now when you do that it hides the original layer and it gives you a new layer that looks exactly the same but when i click on this i see i have points that i can move around which is nice so now let's name this something we call it. So this will be our base, as you might have guessed, and I'll control C, control V, control V. So now I have two and I'll call this one my squash or overshoot, whatever you want to call it. Uh, squash just sounds more fun. This one I'll call stretch. All right, so now I want to hide the layers that, that I'm not focused in on and select my stretch layer and actually stretch this thing out. All right, so uh, you can't hold down shift. I'm sure that's probably something we'll add later on, but I just want to stretch this. Okay, so here's the issue. I had two points right on top of each other, so got to be careful about that. And I could stretch this text out. Maybe take this one also. And I could come in here to these inner points and just, um, you know, you get the picture. So make adjustments like that. And everything is fine and easy when you're working on the first letter. But I think there's some kind of indexing thing where when I go to the next shape, if I move this point, you'll see the, the um, I move this point and the point two to the right gets changed. So if I go two to the left, I could probably get that. And if I go this one and I move over to, you'll see we got, well, we got two points right on top of each other. So I might have to grab this one here. And then here's a weird thing where it starts to go to a whole nother letter. So 
this gets a bit tricky and uh, you, you can go through here and you can see, all right, it, for some reason, this one isn't quite, isn't quite matching up. And um, when I was working on this, there was, there were some points where, you know, I could find them sometimes eventually, sometimes you have to go inside here and then you find it. And um, so that's, that's, you know, that's a beta thing. You're, you're going to get that. So you just got to kind of live with that. Uh, so here I kind of got lucky and I got the point that I wanted right off the bat. Um, but yeah, you get the picture. You could go through these and um, you could try to figure out by by going through. And uh, yeah, I just kind of got lucky with that one. So I try that. That That's the wrong direction. I'll try and go in this direction. Yeah, so like if, if you have... Um, you know, you're not in a rush. You could kind of go through here and guess what they are. I'm not going to go and do all the letters because that would be, you know, a waste of your time. And uh, yeah, the the last thing I would note is when you get to the end, uh, some of these, and um, and you could bring up this window here. So checking for entry index, da da da. So you know, something isn't quite right at the end. And if I try to move this, you'll see some of these endpoints don't. Um, don't move so uh, but yeah like I said this is something I'm sure that will be worked out after the beta and uh, yeah so we've got our stretch text let's take a look at our squash text make sure we select it so for um, the sake of time I'm just gonna work on the first letter because it everything works correctly on it and yeah so I would just do the same thing for for all the rest of the letters and uh, yeah let's call that good so now I'll hide my blend shapes and I'll turn on my base layer and I will alt double click on it and we'll add a blend shape by clicking the plus sign here and blend shape nicely on the top of the list for you and now we need to connect these shapes into the blend shape so I'll double click on the blend shape and we have one input click this button now we have two inputs and i'll take my squash and drag it into input shape one here and i'll take my stretch and drag it into input shape zero here and you can see already it's acting on our base text because they're set to 100 percent and uh, just as a note here i could bring this first one up but whatever's at the bottom of the list or whatever has the higher index, it overpowers. So once I bring this to 100%, you can see now we see 100% of our squash text and zero of our stretch, but there is some overlap. So if I bring this down to say like 70%, you can see we are getting that pushing forwards on the C shape, but we are still getting some of that um, stretched out part in the back and I could you could kind of see what I'm talking about here this is with 72 percent of this thing and then we can add that so that's kind of nice where we could add a blending over multiple shapes and um, as long as your your last one or your bottom one isn't at 100 percent you can get some of that blending and uh, so let's just quickly animate this you you probably you probably got the picture um, of how this would work because we just had keyframes. Oops, I didn't want to do that yet. We just add keyframes to the squash and stretch. Uh, first, I'll I'll move I'll move the text. So we'll start off maybe somewhere around here. I'm working at 60 frames per second because um, I just think it's fun. And I will uh, Alt double click on the um, base text and add a keyframe on the X, and then just come over here. Move it off the screen, holding down shift to constrain it. And um, let's take a gander. I have caching on, so once this loads up, I could see it play in real time. All right, I think that's okay. And I'll put a little bit of an overshoot because um, it just makes things look better by moving forwards, hitting this keyframe button, and then I'll move back to this one. And I'll click and hold on shift and drag this over a little bit. And um, 
think it might be a little fast if I just play that. So I'll give it a little bit more time. And uh, actually, I think it was good how it was. Now, it, that adjustment made it look a little bit slow. All right, and, uh, and it's kind of rough. So let's go into the graph editor, hit the button here. First, I'll select the position and I'll go into the graph editor. Uh, I like to make this big and uh, I'll click in here, press F to frame that up, select these, hit this button. So I got handles and I'll click this handle, have it be a fast out and um, I think this is I think this is okay for ease into that final spot. All right, and uh, maybe it's a little bit fast at the end. I'll click, hold down shift, and drag this over a few frames, and uh, then click my handle, holding down shift. I'll drag it over to get a little bit more ease in, and let's take a look. All right, I'm happy with that. And um, let's go to, um, not these, because these we're pretty much done with. I mean, we could we could always come back and change these shapes later, but uh, I want to go to the actual blend shape. I'll double click on it. And let's go back to the time editor. So I'll have it at, let's turn this off for now. I'll have it as its maximum stretch up to this point. So I'll keyframe that and then I'll reduce that over here and I'll just check this timing. I think that might be a little bit too slow or, or too late. I'll move it back over two and um, all right, so now When it starts to move backwards, that's when I'm gonna do, I'm gonna to start to add some of the squash in here. So I'll just keyframe it now. I'll have it uh, reach its maximum right when it's starting to slow down and come to a complete stop. And then we'll have it come back to zero here. Okay, so that's a little bit off. Maybe I'll try and shift this back a little bit. And it's still a little bit slow. Maybe it needs to come back like that. Maybe I'll grab all three of these keyframes and move them back. Okay, so that's pretty good. Now what I would do is I would go into the, the strength here for this one and go into the graph editor and, and make everything look um, beautiful as far as animation curves. But uh, yeah, that that's basically it for um, animating with blend shapes. So if you use your imagination, there's, there's a lot of stuff that you could do with it. I could have like uh, my text and I can have 10 different blend shapes for all kinds of different effects that I'm looking for. Uh, just in the beta, just be patient with it. You're going to have to do a little bit of guesswork to get your control points, but this is a very, very interesting tool that has only been, as far as my knowledge, only been available in 3d apps. And now it's in a 2d animation app. And, um, to me, that is very exciting.